Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today in this video, what I'm gonna do is a viewer requested video. I've gotten this uh, numerous times, which is how do you set up your uniform and what's on your uniform and what are the different uniform types? Another question I get very specific about the uniform is how I set up my shoulder mic with the cord to come through so it can't be seen. So I'm gonna cover all of those in this video. I hope you enjoy. Now, if you're new to this channel, we primarily cover law enforcement topics and related items. We do videos just like the one you're gonna to see today, and then I take you on ride-alongs with me while I'm on duty at work. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now when it comes to police uniforms, there are typically three basic categories. It's gonna be broken down into your class A or dress blues, your class B, which is your everyday patrol uniform, and then class C, which is a either utility uniform or tactical uniform, it can be sometimes a polyester, but a lot of times it's a polo type shirt where you wear BDU pants along with that polo shirt and everything's embroidered on it. So that's what we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to cover those three types of uniforms, which again, I'm not saying is the be all and end all of every uniform out there, but they're the three most common uniforms you're gonna find at police departments. So without further ado, we're gonna get into the first uniform review. I'm gonna start with the class B uniform, which is the most common uniform that you're going to see on a day-to-day -day basis. And for that, a man who needs no introduction, Mike the Cop. All right, guys, what we have here is Mike in a class B uniform with nothing on it. We're gonna go ahead and pin this uniform up and show you how I do it. First thing we're gonna start with is the badge. Fortunately, these uniforms have holes pre-stitched in so you get it lined up perfect every time. Fortunately, with that being so simple, you just feed it in, clip it, and you're done and ready to go. Now moving on to the collar brass, you'll see that there's holes pre-done in my uniform because I've put them on so many times. When your uniforms are new, you're gonna have to put these on and line them up manually each time and make sure that they're even and straight. Once you've done it, you get pretty good at it, and then if you're diligent about it and put it back through the same holes, they'll line up straight every time for the future. Now you see these little brads, they just clip onto the back and that's what holds it in place so it doesn't pop off the uniform. Once they're both on, it should look a little something like this. All right, up here, I've also gotten quite a few questions about what is this silver chain hanging from your shoulder? All this is is a whistle chain. Basically, it's a silver chain and at the end of it would be the whistle for traffic control. Now, years ago, I decided it was a little too bulky for my pocket and I didn't really like it. So I stopped wearing the whistle and now I just have keys on the end of it that I use for locking up parks at the end of the night. It simply clips over this button, you button it back up like this, and then tuck the chain in your pocket and you're good to go. Now on this side, just opposite of the badge is where your name tag is gonna go. Same as the collar brass, you're gonna have to line it up manually along with the edge of the pocket to make sure that it's straight. It usually takes a couple of times because it's harder to see the holes on this side, even the ones that are already there. Once you have it lined up, just like the collar brass, you're gonna put the little metal tabs on the back so your name tag doesn't pop off during the day. Now on this same side, if you have any specialty pins such as SWAT or field training like me, they go just above the name tag. Same process, line it up, put it on, and put the tabs on behind it. All right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, well, at least the 20 or so of you have asked me about this, the earpiece. Now the bulk of what you see here is gonna go on the inside of the uniform. Our uniforms have a small fabric strap that goes in between the arm and the upper shoulder where you can use the clip that's on the side of this eardrum part, if I could actually figure out how to do it, it clips on there and holds that main mechanism. Then the rubber coiled part pokes up through the collar and then goes up and around your ear. Now right here, the 3.5 millimeter jack, what I did was underneath this bar or whatever you want to call it, I cut a small little slit. This allows me to take the end of that and just poke it through just enough that it can plug into the shoulder portion of the mic, which is going to clip onto that fabric band there. Now I've had some people comment saying that you don't have to cut the slit and you're right, but if you want the cord to be hidden like that, you do. If not, you would have to feed it up where I'm putting that coiled piece and it would go up and over the collar to plug in and you're going to see it no matter what. Now, one of the last and final things that I put on my uniform are a product called Shirt Stays. It's basically an elastic band that clips to the front and the back of the uniform, and then the lower end clips to your socks. When you have them tightened up, it pulls the uniform taut and helps keep the wrinkles out. If you can stand looking at my white legs, this is what it looks like.
and voila, no more wrinkles. Now the pants for this uniform as well as the Class A uniform are your standard polyester pants that have two regular pockets on the sides and two in the back. Some of them have the blue stripe like mine and some don't. Once you've thrown those bad boys on, you top off the uniform with a couple of pens. And then on the other side, I keep a handcuff key and a third backup pen. All right, there you have it. That is the basic setup and tour of the Class B uniform that you would see on your average officer in daily patrol. Now, the other two uniforms are going to be an abbreviated version of this because I'm just going to show you the differences between the two. I want to thank my willing model, Mike the Cop, for making this uniform look good. I appreciate it, buddy. Anybody who's not familiar with Mike, I will have all of his social media links in the description below. He also has a podcast. Maybe one day he'll invite me on. Oh, and before I forget, the third thing I get the most comments and questions about are the fake buttons on our uniforms. I don't know if they're all like this, but ours are. Basically, other than the top buttons, the rest of them are fake, and it's a zipper down here, and you zip it up. It works great for actually storing paperwork and things inside your uniform when you're on calls. You just unzip it halfway and tuck the paper in, and you're good to go. All right, now moving on to the Class A uniforms. My good friend Aram is going to be modeling this for us. For those of you who are not familiar with Aram, he is the owner and operator of CityWalk. Hello, welcome to CityWalk. Take all the praise. Wait a second, that doesn't sound right. I'm sorry, I have my notes screwed up here. Aram's a police officer. You guys might know him as 911 Strong on social media. As with Mike, I will have all of his links in the description below. Go check him out. He's a funny dude. As we get into the Class A's, you'll see that it's long sleeves and there's a tie. The other major difference about the Class A uniforms is you wear the collar brass horizontal with the collar like this. Once you get both sides on, it should look a little something like this. And now for the last thing that would vary with the Class A uniform is if you had an award, you would wear it on this side just above your name tag and specialty pin. The Class A is the only uniform you wear awards on. And last but certainly not least, you have Officer Daniels in the Class C utility uniforms. Now I know most of you don't know who he is, he's kind of a newcomer, but I'll have his links in the description below. I used to think him and Trailer Trash Tammy were the same person, but then I saw him in the same place at the same time, so I guess not. Now you'll see here on the Class C uniform, everything is embroidered on. The patches on the side, the badge, the name tag, and the collar brass, so to speak. You don't have to do anything with this uniform except toss it over your head, tuck it in your pants, and you're ready to go. Now with this style uniform, we wear the BDU style pants, which have the extra pockets and a few little loops on the side to put extra things on. All right, everyone, I hope you learned a little something from that video and I answered the questions that a good number of you have asked me. If there's something I didn't cover, go ahead and feel free to ask them in the comments below and I will try to respond to you as best I can. I want to thank my three special guests for being in my video. If you are not familiar with any one of these gentlemen, I'm going to have all of their links in the show notes below. Go check out their pages. They put out great content, funny stuff. You're going to enjoy it. You won't be disappointed. Now, one of the other things that I'm going to do in this video, if you'll remember from two videos ago, I put a little Easter egg at the very end of the video that said if you watch it to the very end to comment the word patch. So I am going to pick that comment today and give a patch to somebody who commented in there. All right, everybody, and through a random selection process, the winner of that patch is going to be Michael Fabian. Michael, I need you to email me on my Google email address that will be listed in the show notes below here or DM me on Instagram so I can get your contact information and send you that patch out. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for entering in that contest and congratulations. Guys, I'm going to have plenty more of these. In fact, if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, I started making decals that are going to be for the mobsters, okay? So, in fact, what I'm going to do right now for this same video, I'm going to pick one more winner and I'm gonna mail out a couple decals to you. So those are gonna be coming, I'm gonna be giving those away on a frequent basis, so there's gonna be plenty of chances to win and be involved in this stuff so I can give back to you guys. And with that being said, Corey, you know what, I'm gonna butcher your last name, I'm sorry, buddy. Hanik, Haniki, Hanik, Corey Hanik, I'm gonna put it up there so you can see it. Brother, if this is you, same thing. Send me an email with the link in this description or hit me up on Instagram and I'll get you a couple of those decals mailed out. 
Guys, as always, thank you so much for your support and all the positivity. I can't even begin to express how much I appreciate it. Some of the last videos that I've put out have had an unprecedented amount of positivity and comments in there. And look, part of being on YouTube is gonna be getting those negative comments and you're always gonna have your trolls. I always have my designated five or six people that give me a thumbs down, which I could care less about. But I typically get some negative comments too along the way. And most of those I filter out and I have flagged so you guys don't have to put up with that and I take care of it for you. However, I am extremely happy to say in the last two videos that I've put out, I have had almost none of those comments. One or two little picky type things, but for the most part, every one of you have put so much positivity and good vibes in there and I just can't express my thanks enough to you guys. You're awesome. I appreciate it. Again, I hope you learned something from these and until the next one, stay safe and we'll see you soon.